Welcome to HOA Fight Club. I'm Raylene Schifano. I'm going to do a series called This Is What I Would Do. If you have questions about your association or something they've done, um, you can always email me at hoafightclub at gmail.com and I will answer your questions um, through a video. I'll make it for you. Um, today I'm going to do it on asking for records from the association. Um, this is a problem and I don't know why it's such a problem. Um, most state laws say that the association has to give you everything, all records of the association. That includes checks written, invoices, contractor's licenses, contractor's contracts, the, the attorney and the um, property manager's contracts. Um, it's every check that's ever been written, every invoice, every bid, anything that you have for business of the association should be public record for the homeowners. You have a right to see everything. So you should go in and see those records. Um, the only thing that you won't have access to or shouldn't have access to is executive. Now what is executive? Because I hear the boards using that a lot, what an executive um, thing is. So the executive things are lawsuits. Um, that's pretty much the only executive thing I can think of that would really have to um, keep the, the other homeowners out of. If somebody's past due on their account, that's not private. That is a public record. That is something that you should know. All homeowners should know that there are people past due in their association because it affects us all. We all pay those bills. So if five people out of your association aren't paying those bills, the homeowners should know that they are not paying their bills and why the board has not fined them. Um, for doing so. Um, I hate fines, but there are certain people that just don't pay their dues. That's okay. I don't want people to think that boards are horrible for everything. When a homeowner doesn't pay their dues, yes, there needs to be something to bring them current. I keep advocating for our association dues to come out of our um, escrow account because if it comes out of escrow just like your insurance and your house payments and all of these other things then there will be no way that the board could ever not get your dues paid the reason that they don't want your dues to be paid is because they can add fines fees and all of those kind of things to your account which causes you to be past due if they were just dealing with assessments out of escrow accounts they wouldn't be able to do that they would have to only be able to um, go after after you for not paying your assessments and if you are in escrow it's not going to matter so this is a game that they like to play so I always encourage every homeowner to go in get the records of the association so you know what's going on the property managers are really good about making spreadsheets well spreadsheets can be manipulated those spreadsheets aren't honest you want to see the bank accounts you want to know that the money is actually there because if you don't see that bank account ever and you just see a spreadsheet Sheet. Who's to say that the property manager didn't steal it? If the board is relying on those spreadsheets alone, that is crazy. The board should want to see those bank statements every month. Um, I do know there are, that people can get a read-only um, password to bank accounts, which boards really do not want you to have, but you should. You should be able to see those bank account um, statements, whether you have to log in or whether the board brings them to every um, owner's meeting, which is usually once every six months. You have your annual meeting and you have your budget meetings. And the budget meeting is where they should be bringing those statements in so the homeowners can see that the money is actually there, not the property manager's um, spreadsheets that they make up. Who's to say that the property manager is not stealing from the board and the board has no idea? So I always encourage you, even, even if you're buying into a property, go see the records. Don't rely upon those resale certs. My resale cert was fraud. It was um, when I purchased in 2014, um, they gave me a 12, 2012 budget and a 2012 um, reserve study that was not current. That's a violation of the law. That is fraud. So I had to sue to get um, those damages back because there was a lot of damages. The roof's not being up to code. The water 
water intrusion. They knew all of that before I moved in. So if I would have saw those records, if I would have known anything prior to purchasing, I wouldn't have purchased there. Um, they had in our reserve accounts oh, almost a million dollars. Well, there wasn't, there was only like $200,000 in the reserve account. So those resale certs aren't always honest and you should go to meetings and, um, to, and want to see all those records prior to your purchase. I know most of us don't know that because the law doesn't, <clears throat> the lawyers don't want you to know what you're getting into. That's why there's no consumer warnings prior to purchasing into a condo association or an HOA that you're losing your constitutional rights. The legislators refuse to put that in. They refuse to put due process in the laws. So this is where we are at right now. We're still fighting, but we can get the records of each association and go from there. <clears throat> So why is this request so difficult and boards and attorneys want to fight back? Well, if a board and attorney and the property manager are doing things that they shouldn't be doing, which is what I found in my association, I found that they were fining homeowners uh, a $50 fine. Um, that $50 fine came with a property management fee of $60 plus a $10 fee for um, <clears throat> filing the, the fine. And then if you didn't pay within 10 days, they turned it over to an attorney. Well, that attorney just added $3,000 because the fair collection laws do not apply to to attorneys so they would just add those fees on now you're three thousand almost four thousand dollars past due so if you don't pay that in 15 days they can put a lien on your home and they can foreclose so be very careful of what you want so you want to make sure you know everything you know the law you know what your CCNR say so that you can access these records and fight back if you need to your request what do we want to put in our request? Well, if you're going to do a request for records, the formal way of doing it and the only probably way you're going to get into it is by sending a certified letter to the record um, address of the association. So you want to make sure that it is polite, it is kind. Um, if, they, if you want to put your reasons for going in to get these records is that you are a concerned homeowner who wants to know where the monies are being spent. That's all you need to say. You don't need to say that you have any um, underlying reasons or that anything else matters you are an owner and have the right to those records that is your reason for going in to see them so make sure that you are courteous and kind but make sure that you are firm on your request that um, you'll know that that's what you need and that make sure the property manager um, knows that that's what you want um, most PMs I have found will deny your access to records. They will deny your request. Um, and if they do send this to an attorney, that is a violation of the law and a breach of their duty. Their duty is to make sure that the homeowners association runs um, without problems, without issues. Well, if the property manager and the board start blocking homeowners from seeing those records, that's an issue, that's a problem, that's a violation of the law. And if an attorney does that, if an attorney writes you a letter and saying that you cannot see those records, which they did to me, I turned those attorneys in for ethics violations. That is a violation of the law and attorneys don't have the right to violate the law because they feel like it. And that's what most association attorneys do. They violate the law because they feel like they should. They don't want anybody to see those records. They don't want anybody to know that they're charging the board $500 an hour to deal with you, to deal with your record request. There should be any no charges for um, trying to see records and get into an association's um, books. That is required by law. So why would an attorney try to block your right to get in there? Um, then the PM will try to charge you for the records for their time and copies. Well, they don't need to charge you for copies um, because you can take pictures with your phones. Um, if they try to ch charge you for their time, this is their normal work day. I don't understand why they need to charge you for time if you're going to their office. Um, I wouldn't let that deter you. I would pay the fee to go in and see those records. And then if there's an issue with those records or whatever, I would go to the attorney general's office, which they probably won't do anything, but you can go to the Better Business Bureau and you can make complaints there to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. They they may help. Um, it just depends. I do have one attorney that ended up on the watch list um, for the Federal Trade Commission. Um, so the FTC did take um, offense to this attorney doing what she was doing. 
um, and, and has her on that watch list. So there are things that we can do to fight back. They may not seem like big things. They might be little things, but every little step we take to get our rights back is a good step to take. Um, you want to go in and take pictures of everything. You want to videotape if you're having any <clears throat> interactions with the property manager. You can let them know that you're videotaping just to keep things very cool, calm, and collected. They will act more appropriately if they're being taped. <clears throat> And like I said, I would take pictures of every record. You don't have to look at them while you're going through them. Just take pictures of everything you have access to so that you can go back and review those records later on. Um, in the day of technology, all records should be online. Um, if your property manager is a professional property manager, they will let you access all records online. Um, I did have one honest property manager that put everything online. I had everything, I got everything. Um, and then she was taken off our association and another property manager of the same company was put on and he took all those records down. Well, this was in the middle of my lawsuit. So I guess I wonder why they were taking the um, the records off the association's website because they didn't want me to have them. They didn't want to see what decisions they were making in board meetings that they had barred me from. Yes, I was barred from board meetings. I couldn't go to them. They wouldn't let me in. Um, we've all seen the property manager telling me that the board doesn't want me there. That's too bad. That is not their right in most states. <clears throat> you may become a target if you ask for these records. Take it in stride. You will be a target, and if anybody comes after you, you have rights, and that's what we will have to deal with in the future. Um, I was a target for a long time, and I just kept taking the hits, but I never paid out a dime because I was right. So the attorney, the property manager, no one could do anything to me because I wasn't violating the law. They were. So if you go through your CCNRs, which everybody should get their CCNRs out and read through them, understand them, understand the law so that you know how to protect your rights as a homeowner. <clears throat> All right. I'll see you on the next one. Don't forget to ask me if you have any questions. Bye.